I welcome our speaker and my teacher, Dr. Heiner Freiser. And uh, I take great pleasure and uh, to introduce him. Three years back, I still remember that day. It was India-Pakistan cricket match. And I was contemplating whether should I come to his seminar or sh should I watch the match. So I choose the middle path. I said first half I will attend and second half I will watch the match. And I tell you, after attending that first half, what has happened in my practice is translated into many, many relief and cures for patients. And I've been following his technique, his method of analysis. I have ordered his books also and I have been in touch with him to understand different aspects as to how he works. And it has been a really great uh, result for me. And it was actually when he was going to come here, I requested Dr. Meghna that if we can have his talk once again, because I was eager to learn, because whatever I've learned is that four hours and through his books. Just to share a simple example of a case, a girl, a student was suffering from acute URTI two days back. I used the polarity analysis. I repertorized her symptoms and after two days, you know what follow-up she gives me? She says that even I want to practice homeopathy like you in acutes. <laughs> this is what it has the potential to do. So I hope that after today's lecture, it will translate in many, many cures and reliefs in our practice. So I welcome sir once again, Dr. Heiner Fry. Thank you very much. I am very happy to be here again. I hope that uh, many of you will make the same experience as Dr. Devang. Now, uh, my first question is, how many of you have already heard or practiced polarity analysis? Who was here last time? Not so many. So we make a full introduction into the method. This is a bit of theory in the beginning, so I apologize for that. And after that, we look at cases. And Dr. Devang has at least one live case that we will uh, see in the afternoon. So I look forward to do that too. Now let's begin with uh, the introduction. What is polarity analysis. It is a repertorization method uh, that is based on Bönninghausen's therapeutic pocketbook from 1846. So you see it's a method that goes way back in the history of homeopathy. And maybe you will have the impression, well, why do we go back? That is a backward thing. But, you know, the closer you get to the source, the purer the water comes and the more reliable your source is. And that's exactly the experience I made during my long, uh, now 30-year-old uh, career in homeopathy, that the closer we come to Hahnemann, to what he taught, the better and the more reliable are our results. Polarity analysis allows a precise and reproducible homeopathic remedy selection. Reproducible is important because if we make, if we are geniuses in homeopathy, we might understand how we ourselves select a remedy. But it is very difficult to teach the students to become geniuses. So we need actually for the students a simple method to teach, at least in the beginning, and later on they may become geniuses. And for that, uh, the remedy selection must be reproducible. And uh, we have uh, a mathematical element in polarity analysis, that is the polarity difference. We calculate the polarity difference. And by that, we have a healing probability for each remedy that shows up in the repertory. 
you know, that Hahnemann once said, homeopathy should actually heal according to mathematical principles, standards. I never understood that before I really got the experience with polarity analysis, because everything seemed so diffuse. And with polarity analysis, it becomes quite clear. So, what are the advantages of polarity analysis? It is easy to teach, uh, and it is easy to learn. It allows students to, heat, to treat patients early in their homeopathic formation. And it is very efficient and can therefore also be used in a general practice. Like, the whole method has been developed in my pediatric practice, and I see 40 to 50 patients every day. The time I have for each patient is my personal time I spend with the patient, now hold your breath, is 12 minutes. Within 12 minutes, I have to decide in an acute case what remedy the patient needs. And you will see from the results that these 12 minutes are actually enough to, to uh, get to the right remedy. Of course, in complex cases, in chronic cases, I need more time, but I don't need four hours for a complex case. I need maybe one hour and a half, or at the maximum two hours. <coughs> When I started with homeopathy, I was in a situation like this fellow here, and this mountain looked about to me like the Himalaya. I'm sure you're quite familiar with that feeling. Probably everyone who starts with homeopathy is a little fellow before a huge mountain. And I I I told my wife in the beginning, I wish I was five years older and I had climbed at least the first peak of this mountain. After five years, I probably had the feeling I'm about here or so. <laughs> but by now, I think we've managed it to get up there, more or less. <laughs> and we also, with the new method, with polarity analysis, we've managed to diminish the size of the mountain. With polarity analysis, we can solve 85% of all cases I see, of all unselected cases I see in pediatric practice, and including complex adult cases. So actually, we have a very good instrument for doing most of it. And of course, as always, it is not possible to do everything with polarity analysis. Sometimes I would love to send my patients to Dr. Sankaran or another uh, genius in homeopathy when I don't get any further. So it's important to have several methods at your disposition. What are the key elements of polarity analysis? Most important in uh, this method are the modalities and the polar symptoms. Then we have Bönninghausen's uh, concept of contraindications, which plays a certain role, and we have the, as new as a new element this polarity difference. Now, I, uh, I'm, this is this part of the introduction. I'm always about hesitant to to bring, but I think still it's. Uh, because in newer methods, sometimes it is not anymore quite clear what is our task. What do we have to heal? You know, we all, we all are doctors and we learn in our education to treat disease. And that's exactly, exactly what uh, Hahnemann how Hahnemann's aim was to treat the disease that the patient presents now. And he laid, it, laid that down in these two aphorisms, uh, six and seven. Then the similarity uh, concept 
is also a thing that has been changed uh, in uh, later uh, after Hahnemann. He wrote in his Aphorism 153 that the more striking, exceptional, unusual and odd characteristic signs and symptoms of the disease are to be especially and almost solely kept in view. And this is understood as rare, peculiar, strange symptoms. But he says what he actually means with it in uh, Aphorism 133. Namely, he says, through the modalities, what is peculiar and characteristic about each symptom becomes evident. So the modalities play a, an extremely important role in polarity analysis, and actually they play an extremely important role in his homeopathy. Most of the polar symptoms are modalities, so that's uh, the connection to the method. And then the last point of him was the role of mind symptoms. He says uh, emotional state often tips the scale in the selection of homeopathic remedy. Tips the scale, that uh, means it has an influence after we have made a differential diagnosis of remedies according to the modalities and polar symptoms. It's not as, for instance, in the Kentian uh, method, where the mind symptoms are up here, high, the highest priority. Actually, it's the last step for Hahnemann to select the remedy with the mind symptoms. In summary, <coughs> very short, no speculations, no theories, we just look at the symptoms. We don't have to make interpretations of what we see, we just look what the patient brings to us. That is Hahnemann's basis. Now, Bönninghausen's contribution, uh, there are three things that stem from Bönninghausen. One is the rank of symptoms. If we have to choose a homeopathic remedy, we have a hierarchy of symptoms, namely the main symptom or main disease with its characteristics on top, then additional uh, symptoms second level and changes in the state of mind on the third level. The second uh, important point of, Arnim, of Benninghausen are the contraindications and the third very important contribution of Benninghausen is his pocketbook. The pocketbook was actually the first operable repertory in homeopathy. And it has an outstanding grading of symptoms. I don't think any other repertory today has such a perfect grading of symptoms as the one of Benninghausen. And this is actually astonishing because he wrote this pocket book after about 10 years of practice or 15 years of homeopathic practice. And he exactly did it right. Of course, there are some flaws in it, as in every repertory, but there are astonishingly few of them. <coughs> and this grading actually is the basis of our new method. We rely on his uh, grading of symptoms. <coughs> 